One of my favorite quotes from your book, Relentless, from good to great to unstoppable, was in order to have what you really want, you must first be who you really are. Would love to get a bit of a breakdown on what you meant <laughs> with that quote. Well, you know what? I, I always say this. The amount of energy individuals put into being something they're not. Imagine if you put that energy into being your true self into who you really are, into accepting your flaws, accepting your strengths, understanding your weaknesses, making them better, instead of living a life through you know, different filters or the way other people want you to act, the way they want you to do things. You're out there trying to portray something that you're not for somebody that you don't even really like, you don't care about, you don't want to spend time with them, but you don't want to be judged by an individual that you don't even know that really doesn't have any bearing on your success and how you should, how you should live your life. So in order to have what you want, you have to know exactly who you are. And those individuals that know exactly who they are understand what makes them great, what makes them vulnerable, they understand how to use their flaws. They accept all parts of themselves. They accept the good, the bad, the insecurities, the fears, the doubts, everything that, everything that comes with it. And they work on those things to get better. When you try to be something that you're not, you try to hide all those things all the time so nobody can actually see them. But the person that you end up hiding them from the most is actually yourself. I'm curious, Tim, how did Michael Jordan or Kobe or Dwayne Wade embody that? Or did they when you were working with them? Oh, no, they all did. I mean, listen, they, you had these individuals. If anybody ever got a chance to see the last dance, you know, you got to see Michael's personality and the way he practiced, the way he played games. And that's that's how he was. You know, he was this competitive individual in everything he did non-apologetic for things that, di that he didn't need to apologize for. You know, you have individuals that don't know who they are. They're constantly apologizing for things they didn't even do. They're apologizing for making themselves better, for, for other people not understanding what their goals are and how driven they are. And these individuals, they were like, listen, this is what I want out of this team. This is what I want out of myself. And I'm never going to ask you to do something that I won't do. I won't do myself. And even Kobe, you know, he, these guys weren't quote unquote great teammates in the sense where they were uplifting individuals. They give individuals accolades for doing things that they were supposed to do. These individuals went out there and their number one priority was to win, was to make themselves better, was to make their individuals around them better because in order to win that ultimate prize, which was a championship, they needed everyone to elevate their games. So in order for them to do that, they had to understand who their leader was all the time. Not some of the time, but all the time. And did it alienate some people? Exactly, it did. You know, even some of the players said, listen, how, were there times where these individuals crossed the line? They did, they did. But after years and years, they got a chance to understand that they were actually making these individuals better. You know, I always say, you know, you look at everyone needs that thorn in their side. And once you miss that thorn, that's you're kind of like, yeah, I wish I kind of had it back. You know, in the in the other book, Winning, I talk about how a rose, you know, which everyone considers a very beautiful flower, actually lives longer with its thorns. When you cut the thorns off, you decrease the life of the flower. So when you take away these individuals that hold you accountable, that know exactly who they are, that want to get the best out of you, people think those are thorns in their side and they actually are, but they actually bring you closer to the life that you, that you want because they're constantly pushing you. They're constantly pulling you. They're constantly elevating you. They're constantly holding you accountable. And isn't that what we all want? There's so many cliches out there and these things drive me crazy that all these cliches out there and people want to get, they want to get rewarded for doing things that you're supposed to do. You know, how, I, there, how about this one that says, you know, showing up is half the battle. No, showing up is none of the battle. So you, you're looking for a praise for just for showing up. You're supposed to show up. 
you got to show up to whatever you're supposed to do. You got to go. If you don't show up, you can never grow. How many people hide from the things that they need to be showing up for? And if showing up is half the battle, you're not ready for the real battle. If what you've heard on Flow Research Collective Radio has been helpful, please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you are listening to this. Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. Thank you.